Oh. A lot of this isn't going to make sense to you. I don't know. We're going to find out. And I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning with the house. I lived here until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. Okay, that's kind of weird. Why? Are you going to tell us? I hope so. Her hand's normal here. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago. Marked urgent. Open immediately. Okay, we should, uh, you should tell somebody about that. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. In her will, my mother left me a key, but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know. Or she thought that the mystery would be enough to bring me back. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. Ooh. Is it going to be like... The woods around the house have always been uncomfortably silent. As if they're about to say something, but never do. Is it like a ghost house? was exactly like I remembered it the way I've been dreaming about it that's a dope fucking house as a child the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words now as a 17 year old I knew exactly what those words were fuck yeah I was afraid of the house I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. Looking in, I felt like the house itself had been waiting for me. Maybe it unlocks the garage. Well, garages have handles. That's just not... That's a plot hole. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't think YouTube's the move. This is what remains of Edith or Edith Finch. What about me, Chris?
I definitely do, buddy. What? Where the fuck do I go? go maybe I'm missing something up here uh how long has it been fuck four months five months I'm, I'm lost. And she walks so slow. Oh, I can go behind the damn house. I'm an idiot. Crawling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. had been turned off the night we left. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. Chris, it did not take me four months to have sex with Renee. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Like how only one restaurant would deliver to our house, so we had Chinese a lot. Or how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. That is a lot of canned Nothing fish. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it. Like a smile with too many teeth. Edie told me once that every finch who ever lived is buried somewhere in the library. Do you believe her? After Milton disappeared, thank you, Sush. Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. My grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. But why? As a kid, I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. We're good, we're just chilling. The last time I was in Edith Sr.'s room, I was 10, and she was painting my portrait. How are you? Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Well, she was famous. <laughs> Edie's father, Odin, built the original house. Barbara was a child star for two years. Until America grew out of it. Ooh. Right where it hurts, huh? I'm Barbara In Barbara's room, you're gonna say that? The fucking goal on this kid, dude. Molly always seemed like a girl I could imagine being friends with, if she hadn't died in 1947. Yeah. 
Yeah, Chris, you'll get your fucking PP touch, dude. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. I was. I regret it. From the paintings on the wall, it was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan. But I had no idea what was behind that door. Just like I had no idea where all this was going to lead. Jesus. December 13th, 1947. Dear Diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's going to happen. It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. Oh, look how small I am. I kept eating and eating. Okay, what? I ate a lot of things that night. Then I heard chirping outside my window. It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. Don't tell I me you. I reached out for her. And suddenly, I was a cat. Wait, what? I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. Oh, so I'm a kitty. She was getting really tired. <laughs> now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I gobbled her up. Ow! And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. What the fuck is happening? Rabbits.
Oh, you didn't need to bring down. Thanks. How was it? How was given the sign? Oh, she's supposed to come in and talk to Well, yeah, but how was... Oh, good. I wish I would have taken a picture of it. It's still good as I'll do it. I thought it was an office photo. Aww. Yeah. You got a trash for down here. Nice. My junk, thanks. I love you. What? Yeah. through my talons. I swallowed him up, and I didn't chew one bit. Mm -hmm. Then I flew off to find something bigger. A mama rabbit! Come here! She was almost too big to carry. I started choking, but I couldn't stop eating. And suddenly, I was a shark! Bro, what the fuck fever? This kid has some fucking polio or something. to the ocean. Now, I was hungrier than ever. Oh. Oh. I wanted fat, juicy seals. I tore off her flipper, and it tasted really good. What? I don't know if I like this game. <laughs> Sush. If you're not subscribed yet, you could be my 10th subscriber on YouTube. I started the quarry and I started editing and stuff and it looks really good. And I don't know. I'm really proud of it. Come here! Or oh, come here! Come here! I grabbed on tight. When I was so hungry, I jumped out of the water. When I opened my eyes, everything had changed. Oh, it's a turd. a monster and I smelled people everywhere. I was big, but I moved real quiet. to stop, but also, I did it. Drunk. 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 
Passenger, I was still hungry. And across the water, I smelled something new. Something I had to have. So I swam towards it. I slithered onto the sand, and the good smell went into an old pipe. Oh, now I'm gonna be terrified to take a fucking shit. Thanks, kid. I got closer and closer. Oh, it's a baby. It's her. I didn't feed this kids nothing. All of my stomach started growling. And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time, but I couldn't hear anything. I think it's waiting for me to fall asleep. But it's not going to wait much longer. It needs to be, and we both know I will be. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. That was actually really fucking good. I got the sense Edie had spent a lot of time here. Before my mom sealed the doors. I can't describe it, but I felt like some part of Molly was still here. Molly's gerbil had a tiny bedroom with its own even tinier gerbil cage. I grew up looking at Molly's room through the peephole. Being inside for the first time, I felt like I'd stepped behind a painting. Sorry I'm not talking much, guys. This is actually really fucking interesting. The monster's on the bed? No, that's her octopus that she was hanging out with. I think... Because if you look, it looks like her dad got attacked by something. So maybe, maybe it was all in her imagination. This will be obvious later, but my mom never told me any of these stories. Edie would have, but mom didn't like bringing up the past. Though, Maybe. when we adopted a stray kitten, she was the one who named it Molly. I spent a lot of time in Great Grandma Edie's room. Her room was like a museum. For 500 years, the Finches have been famous throughout Norway for their fortune. And misfortune. Odin Finch buries the latest victims of the family curse his wife, Ingeborg, and their newborn son, Johan. Oh, what the fuck? On January 7th, 1937, he set sail with his family and his house, hoping to leave the curse behind. But 40-foot waves off the coast of Washington send the house and Odin to the bottom of the sea. Well, that, that could have been foretold by anybody. Odin's daughter, Edie, with husband Sven and baby Molly, step ashore in their new home. Orcas Island. Odin Finch is the first to be buried in the new family cemetery. His daughter Edie is already dreaming of a new Finch house.
Damn. Whatever's wrong with this family, it goes back a long ways. Two hundred IQ points. When Edie told people Sven was killed by a dragon, she could also have said he was building a dragon shaped slide that collapsed. <laughs> she could have, but she didn't. Oh, that makes sense. They took a picture of the collat. Oh, that was the brain. Maybe that was the branch that did it. Even in her 90s, sometimes Edie seemed a lot younger than my mother. I don't know. Oh, this bathroom's fucking the hip to be square. The only trace grandpa Sam's first wife Kay left on the house was the pink bathroom. It was a pretty big trace. There's a secret in this bathroom. It's in the last place you would look. It isn't in the cupboard. It's hidden in this book. Bro, what the fuck? Well, maybe put the book away right, buddy. Sven gave Sam an old camera he'd refurbished. He never put it down. I knew Grandpa Sam had a twin. And that he never talked about him. I guess my grandpa didn't like history any more than my mom did. How I Want to Remember My Brother by Sam Finch. The thing I remember is that when he made up his mind, that was it. Oh, I've seen this. My brother said he'd die before he ate another mushroom. And he did. At Barbara's funeral, he swore he'd never be afraid again. And he wasn't. I think Calvin always wanted to fly. But that day, he finally made up his mind to do it. I told him going around was impossible. Maybe if I hadn't said that. Alvin, I'm not gonna tell you again. Maybe if the wind hadn't picked up. Then maybe he'd still be here. But I doubt it. I think he'd already made up his mind. That's what I want to remember about my brother. <laughs> the day he made up his mind to fly. And he did. Calvin's story felt strangely familiar. When I was younger, I remember trying to do the exact same thing. It's fucking sad. 
I have to t I have to check something though. Damn, he sounded... He sounded just like... He sounds just like the guy who plays Atreus. The guy who did that narration there. Damn. After the funeral, Edie roped off Calvin's half of the room. It's not the same guy, though. Passages were a pretty tight fit. They'd obviously been built for smaller hands and bellies. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. I'm not supposed to be out yet. Back in we go. thought of Barbara as a child star. Well, she she was. I never thought about how hard it must have been. Of all the stories people wrote about Barbara's death, I'm surprised Edie saved this one. Oh, Jack here with another ghastly tale inspired by America's most unfortunate family. I'm calling it the surprise ending of Barbara Finch. As a child star, Barbara was famous for her scream. Now at 16, she was all washed up. Or has been. But in a lucky break, she'd been asked to perform her signature scream at a local convention for monster movie fans. It was just the boost her career needed. Unfortunately, her scream hadn't aged well. <laughs> Getting better. I think you just need the right motivation. Her biggest fan and current boyfriend, Rick, was about to demonstrate when... Now that was a great scream. It was Barbara's father, Sven. He'd slipped into a table saw and had to be rushed to the emergency room. So Barbara got stuck babysitting her youngest brother, Walter. Her convention comeback was canceled. Okay, I'm hearing frustration, but I'm not hearing terror. What if I tried... A gang of hoodlums and Halloween masks have been terrorizing Orcas Island tonight. Police are urging residents to... That came from the... 
the basement. You're right. Also, I loved your delivery on that. Why is your basement door locked? Because my dad likes making puzzles and secret passages. There's a key hidden in the music box. The secret is to keep winding and winding until finally the key pops out. Thanks, babe. I'll be back in a sec. 20 minutes later, Rick hadn't returned. So Barbara went to look for him, right on cue. She reached for the music box. And as she wound the key, she listened for Rick, but the house was silent. How did they get the Halloween music? Can somebody uh, answer that for me? How did they get the Halloween music in this game? She found Rick's crutch and imagined the worst. Bro, like this is John Carpenter's theme. just trying to scare you to help you find your scream. Well, I'm not scared, Rick. I'm furious. Then act furious. All I'm getting from you now is that you're hurt and confused and you're... She threw him out, but she kept a little something to remember him by. Barb, have you seen my other crutch? And she was still holding it when she fell asleep watching the late, late picture show. Hours later... Barbara! Walter, what's going on up there? Ah! Okay, I'm coming up. But if this is a trick, you're dead, Walter. Oh, it's a spooky roller ghost. Ooh, he's spooky. And he's fabulous. Walter, are you there? Walter had vanished, but his bedside radio was still on. Orca's Island police describe the man as six feet tall with a steel hook for a hand. Residents are urged to lock all doors and windows and notify the police of any suspicious activity. I returned, saw the hook man, and was speechless. He was quite smashing. Oh, slam that door. And he was. He couldn't get enough of Barbara. Okay, Barbara. There's got to be another way out of here. That night, she played her part. She thought about abandoning Walter, but just couldn't do it. I don't like this guy's voice. Scary.
wasn't moving. But she sensed the story might not be over yet. He heard was <gasps> at the door. She heard whispering. It was coming from inside the house. <gasps> oh, dear. She saw what kind of monsters they were, and she realized what was about to happen. She was going to be famous. And with her final breath, Barbara Finch gave the performance of her life. I wasn't there myself, but I hear Barbara. Was magnificent. Poor girl. She had a taste for stardom. But unfortunately, so did her fans. Of course, the police blamed it all on poor Rick, who disappeared the same night. And little Walter? Hiding under his bed the whole time. He took it all pretty hard. But that's another story. As for Barbara, tucked inside the music box is all they ever found of her. Her ear. Now that's what I call a real eerie tale. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Edie told me all Barbara wanted was to be remembered, as absurd as that comic was. Maybe what Edie saw was a happy ending. I guess now I know why mom doesn't like me playing with the music box. Barbara did get bodied. A lot of things got left behind in the whirlwind of that last night. My mom wasn't much of an optimist, but... She never stopped believing that my brother Milton was alive. Hey, uh... Edith, I, I can't fucking see a goddamn thing. Take it easy, Sush. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night's rest. Mom said the basement was off limits. Unless I wanted another tetanus shot. I 
I saw Edie sneak down to the basement once. Thank you. I appreciate that. Packages. I did. I had a great one. I thought maybe she was hiding presents. It turned out she was hiding a lot more than that. I remember asking mom once about where Walter had gone. She said after Barbara died, he got as far away as he could. If there's a pattern in all these stories, I think it's that none of us has gotten very far. Goodbye, everyone. I can't believe I've been down here for 30 years. On that first day, after the shaking started, I didn't think I'd survive a week. But after a few days, I settled into a routine. I don't think I'm doing this right. Oh, there we That's go. That's what kept me sane. Having a schedule, living for today. I always expect it to be dead tomorrow. But if you wait long enough, you get used to anything. Even a monster on the other side of the door starts to feel normal. Almost friendly. And then one day, everything just... stopped. Whatever that thing was, it was gone. Maybe it got tired of waiting. Or maybe I just got tired of being afraid. It's been a week now, the longest in 30 years. I'm done waiting. I have to leave while I still can. I know it's out there, somewhere. Whatever killed Barbara. And Molly. And Calvin. Maybe this is all a mistake. But I need to stop living the same day, even if it kills me. Whatever's out there, I want you to know I'm ready for it. I'm going to appreciate all of it, especially the food. I don't mind if I only have a year left, or a month, or a single week. I'd be happy with one new day. I can already imagine the sun on my face. Walter died when I was six. 
I can't believe my mom never told me he was down here. I'm sure my mom was trying to protect me. Jesus. Maybe she was afraid I'd end up like Walter. But if she never told me about an uncle under the house, I can only imagine what else she was hiding. I don't want to make the same mistakes she made, trying to bury something that's still alive. So the shaking the whole time was a train. Now that there's only one of us left, or maybe two, I thought it was time I heard the stories for myself and found out what happened to everyone else. But now I'm worried the stories themselves might be the problem. Maybe we believed so much in a family curse, we made it real. I don't know if I should even be writing this. Maybe it'd be better if all this just died with me. Why? But I thought you should know about your family. Bro, she's only 16, so it kind of we or 17, so it kind of weirds me out to say this, but maybe she's pregnant. History you're a part of. Thanks for the sub, Chris. Sush will appreciate that. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate you. Though, to be honest, I feel as lost as you probably do right now. I think the people in these stories believed them for what that's worth. No, I'm not, Chris. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do push-ups. I'm too tired. Look at the house. That history of imagination and stubbornness and madness. I'll get you next time. Any of it seems possible. Thank you for the sub, though. I do appreciate that a lot. I think we've been surrounded by death for so long, we've just gotten used to it. What kind of family finishes building a cemetery before starting the house? Do you want me to do push-ups, Chris? I'll do push-ups after the game. I plan on stay I plan on streaming until I beat this. It's embarrassing for me D to I admit did. this, but... The pet cemetery may be more uncomfortable than the human one. Jesus. Three of the gerbils are mine, and two had been my fault. Sven built the house, but it was Edie who designed the cemetery. I'm sure Odin's monument had been Edie's idea. My mom was always trying to move on, but for Edie, the past never went away. She could see it poking out of the water at low tide.
Wait, that's the fucking house? Uh uh. Edie said she dreamed about the old house every night. Holy shit. Edie's side was always easier for me to understand. But the older I get, the more I can see where my mom was coming from. Her dad had been pretty strict, but it wasn't enough to save her brothers. She was just trying to do better. She lost two of her brothers, just like I did. I get why she tried so hard to protect us. There's so many things I wish I could ask my mom now. Part of me thinks this is what she wanted all along. For me to come back someday and find everything out for myself. Okay. What makes me think what makes me think more that she's pregnant is when she was going through one of the smaller things. She was like in for smaller bellies. So let's peek down. I'm right. But looking back on it now, if she told me there was going to be so much climbing, all right, you're pregnant. I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. I fucking knew it. I never met Grandpa Sam, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. They were both pretty intense. Dawn, I promise you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are going to last a lifetime. Mm hmm. Perfect. It's going to rain the whole weekend, isn't it? Please just take the damn picture. Hey, language. I will never forget this weekend, Dad. That's the spirit. Okay, got it. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. You're right, Dad. It's starting to clear up. Still freezing, though. Aw. Should not have drunk all that coffee. Ah, nothing quite like being outside. I want to see the dead pee. Where is he? Oop. A little more gas in the tank, I guess. Hey! <laughs> That's a keeper. Hmm. I'm just saying, 
I'm not always gonna be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff, if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was gonna be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. I know, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't been out here in 20 years. Last time I was with my brother Calvin. Man, that was a great trip. Your grandpa's fan taught us how to fish. How to build a fire. We found an old logging trail. There were deer everywhere. What Don, am I supposed think you could find something more interesting to photograph? I would love to. I bet if I could remember where that trail was, we'd spot a buck for you in no time. I don't know what to take a picture of, Dad. Check the map. Dad. Good eyes, Don. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of you. Dad. Let me get behind you. Do I have to do this? Don, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to survive, you'll need to be strong. Great shot, Don! Proud of you, Don. Always remember that, okay? Dad, it's twitching. I think That's it's. That's totally so normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about. Dad! Oh! That's how he fucking died? these stories that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me Sam spent his life shooting photos but mom said he got nervous being in front of the camera I guess we're all afraid of something After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot. Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. I think he saw things the rest of us don't. What do I do here? Sweetie. Hello? Sam, I told you I don't want to talk right now. I wonder what he saw. What his world was like.
Dude, this frog's going X Games mode. You reminded me so much of Cowboy Bob. Lost in his imagination. Hey, there's so much I don't understand. Whoa, what? About Gregory. About everything. But I know what happened wasn't your fault. Sam. Bro, what the fuck? I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry and yet a poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. My father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom were the words that I would have When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. My dad, that's my, that's my job right there, bro. The wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. The rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made.
thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, Make the music louder. I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. Man. This game's got me feeling some type of way. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. I would have moved out of the fucking house. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Louis was born a year later. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. And for a while, things were good, almost normal, but it didn't last. The beginning of the end was Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. I was four when Milton disappeared. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors.
Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Oh, you're smoking that hookie. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. Bro, he was a gamer? What kind of rig you got? You got an RTX uh, 3080 in there? Dear Mrs. Finch, As Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery. But he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... wander. Oh, he's gaming. I asked him to describe it. He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. I can't fall behind. Then something moved. Bats. And toads. And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss, but he said Lewis had become a model employee, methodical, tireless, focused, like a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. 
he no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became Head a game jam. for him. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Louisville. St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis. Until mm. one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a handsome queen. Perhaps. The queen was on her own quest for Sinister serpents. He followed the sound of her. Silver heart. All right. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. He knew the world was all in his imagination. He was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. began to despise the man with a royal contempt.
I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. including the wise Calico who'd insisted on advising him. <clears throat> his queen waited, holding his crown. There was only one thing left to do. Bend down his head. And the rest I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. Holy fuck. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. Yeah. Holy shit balls, dude. Hold on. Let me get it. Well, let me get a little chocolate. Let me get a little chocolate up in here. This shit is deep, bro. I like... I've been wanting to play it for a few years. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. I don't know if I'm ready. Chris, thank you again for the tear, dude. For the gift. You're insane. day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last... I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. You're a 
afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Okay. Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for <clears throat> one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. But I never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. I got turned around. I started seeing things. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. A saw? But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and... Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car and... I never saw great-grandma Edie again. The next morning, the band came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. We both tried to make the best of it. A few years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> the rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while. And then she didn't. And then I was alone. last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. 
appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. Oh, is this, this her baby? To be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you. And tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now... Things didn't work out that way. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. Damn. What a good fucking game, dude. I'm so happy I ended up playing that. Fuck. Well, thanks for hanging out for the short stream, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was really fucking good. Yeah, I gotta record the quarry and stuff before I head to bed. Yeah, I gotta I gotta go record the quarry and stuff, man. I gotta get that all situated. But if you're not watching the quarry on YouTube, part one and two are out, dude. Oh, that is You think you think I should put that on YouTube? Darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you. Again. I think I should too. That was fucking. I'll probably upload that tonight, and then I'm gonna upload uh the quarry tomorrow. But thanks so much for hanging out, guys. Seriously, like it means a lot. Chris, thanks again for the sub. Billy, thanks for hanging out. I'll be live tomorrow. We'll probably continue Resident Evil 2 tomorrow. Peace out, guys.